In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I've been reading through meditations on the Passion, and I came across this passage that struck me. And it was uh, about the suffering of Jesus, and who's fighting for him, and who's not fighting for him. It says, um, All the worthless summoned to bear witness against Jesus. This is always the way. The wicked are so much more active in fighting against God than the good in fighting for him. Our Lord's disciples and friends are doing nothing for him while his enemies are seeking to destroy him. When I look at myself, oh, how little have I have done, how little I am doing for the interests of Jesus. This... Uh, theme you know, it struck me just because I, I've talked about this but I've never seen it written anywhere and I, I was just uh, encouraged I guess by the uh, the writing this was the book itself was published in the early 1900s I think uh, prior to 1920 if memory serves me so it's a long time ago and the, the key line here is, is the wicked are so much more active in fighting against God than the good in fighting for him. And it reminds me what I've often said about our good priests, and that is that in the ordinary form, this doesn't typically happen in the extraordinary form, but in the ordinary form, when a priest seeks to make the liturgy more reverent or uh, to change the church in any way that is more in keeping with the teachings of the church uh, or to preach in their homilies things that are difficult but in keeping with the teachings of the church they often get hammered by people who are offended and why are they offended because they're immature they're not there because they believe in the teachings of the church. There's many reasons they're not yet converted. Uh, they're confused, many reasons. And how quick those who are in that category to attack the priest and how slow and how outnumbered are those who would defend the priest, defend a good priest. And it really ought not to be so. But why is it so? It made me muse on that question. And part of the reason it's so is because the disciples, other than John, and, and I don't know why John was stronger than the others, and because, you know, in this situation, in my analysis, it would seem to rule him out as well, but they had not gone yet through. Uh, the Pentecost, a Holy Spirit in filling experience of Pentecost, which then, of course, uh, has this huge effect on each of them and causes them to, you know, move from cowards and deniers and runners, if you will, to people who ended up dying uh, as martyrs, most of them, for. For, for Jesus and our testimony to Jesus. So, so we have men that are good men. They have indeed left um, so much behind to follow Jesus. They have followed him all the way to the Garden of Gethsemane. And even uh, Peter drew a sword to defend him, but then, of course, denied him three times but after the Holy Spirit came after the Holy Spirit fell um, they were more deeply converted and I, I don't want to say truly converted because I don't think that's fair I think they were more deeply converted and I think some of us need to be more deeply converted I don't have anyone in particular in mind but ask the question, do we stand up for our priests? 
who are Jesus to us in the Mass and in the confessional? Do we defend them with dignity and charity? Do we praise them when they seek to do to bring the liturgy or something in the church into deeper conformity to the church? Do we encourage them when they preach a homily that was likely pretty difficult and that people may dislike? Do we spread a good word about our priests as much as we're ready to spread a word of criticism or as much as the enemies of the Lord uh, and, and of the good uh, are, are willing and, and quickly spreading dissension and that sort of thing. It's fascinating how some people can claim to be so deeply committed to the Lord and then do things that are so radically contrary to his calling. You know, I've even had this in my own life. I've had somebody say to me uh, an extreme statement that I was never comfortable with, but uh, and that always kind of set me aback. The person said, I would die for you. And what's fascinating is that as soon as there was the slightest conflict that they had to deal with, and it wasn't even necessarily with me, but I was the one who was um, requiring that it be dealt with in the com context of community. As soon as that came, and it wasn't a big deal even, uh, they, they bolted, and they're gone. And I guess the old saying I, is, so this has been around for a long, long time, fair weather friends, right? We can't be fair weather friends and be authentic disciples of Jesus. We can't be people who with our mouths praise God and claim his name and yet fail to protect those who represent him. In particular, I'm speaking of our priests. But even also in our friendships and in our commitments in Apostle VA to one another. We can't be people who um, only remain when things go our way. To be authentic disciples of Jesus and to be holy people of God, we must, even when we are offended, fight towards one another, not away from one another. Fight towards the good and supporting the good and recognize that our offenses are probably things that, even if they're wrong, they're things that we need to, to um, invite us to deeper healing or maturity because they've tapped into our wounds or our pride or whatever. We need to be careful when we have an instinct to run um, instead of standing by those who are faithful, although flawed. Certainly Jesus wasn't. Um, our priests are and so are we. And so all the more need for grace and commitment, deeper commitment, real commitment. So may it be that you are a person whom your priest looks upon as an encourager, as a supporter, as one who would fight for him. And, that, and may it be true that you really would fight for him. And may it be that your friendship is not merely that which is given in fair weather, but that even when there are storms, and even when we sin against one another, and even when we hurt one another, that we remember that's a time to cling ever more strongly. Because that's the time when the enemy wants to divide us. So may you see when the enemy's working to divide and may you fight against that. May we be, all of us, friends in fair weather and in the storms, united in Jesus for the sake of his kingdom. And may Jesus Christ be praised now and forever. Amen.